been wanted. Wanting. Wanted. <laughs> no, I haven't been wanted. I've really been wanting to start a Bible study. You know, I've had Bible studies in the past. I've done men's Bibles, men's ministry Bible study. I've done a home Bible study. I've done a women's Bible study. I've done Sunday school. You know, I've done quite a bit. Not to great degrees, you know, of like, you know, some pastor, you know, where every year, you know, you've got more and more of your volume of work out there, you know, on the web or wherever you got it. But I've always been wanting to start a Bible study, you know, especially with video, now that God has blessed and caused to grow the ministry, you know, in such a way that he's taken over and inspired it to go in the direction he wanted to go. I've always thought, well, Lord, let's do a Bible study. And so far he's done devotionals, <laughs> you know, which is okay. You know, it's like, yeah. They are pretty in-depth, you know, got to admit, you know, they're pretty good. But I haven't really sat down and done a Bible study, you know, like a book of the Bible, you know, like, oh boy. So now God finally has inspired us to take Vidibo to the next level, take us up one notch, one step farther, to go where no man has gone before. Really? No, really? You don't know that? Oh, okay, well... We're going to study the Book of Americans. You don't know the Book of Americans? It's in your Bible. You know, open your Bible and look up the Book of Americans. I'll show you. It's, let's see, Russians, Norwegians, Mexicans, Latinos. Oh, here we go. We're getting there. Anglo-Saxons. It's right after the book of Anglo-Saxons. Oh, I mean Acts. You know, right after Acts, the next book is Americans. The Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Americans. Well, Romans, but they're the same, aren't they? Aren't they? We'll be studying the book of Romans but really, it should have been called the Book of Americans because, after all, that's who we're talking about, aren't we? And that's who this book or this epistle is written to, us. So, I don't have any problem looking at the entire Book of Romans and knowing full well God intended to write it as the Book of Americans because, really, that's what the Book of Romans is. It's the Book of Americans. Oh, boy. Amen to that, brother. <laughs> We'll be using as our proof text, or our partial text, or our ability to stand on some kind of text, Fritz Rittenauer's book. He's got a really good book, you know, I kind of enjoy him, and I've enjoyed reading his and using it as a devotional. I used it as a Bible study one time on how to be a Christian without being religious. And really, it's just the book of Romans. That's basically what it is, and it's a expository, so to speak, but it's expounding upon the book of Romans in a Americanized way. So what he should have called this was How to Be a Christian Without Being Religious, the book based upon the Book of Americans, because that's what it is. You and I, we're going to get down into it. So what you should do is probably sit back and maybe read the book, you know. Oh, you don't have one of these? Well, they are out of print. <laughs> uh, you might be able to still find them around. You know, Fritz Rittenauer, you know, How to Be Religious Without, you know, being, or How to Be a Christian Without Being Religious, but he doesn't say you have to be religion versus relationship, which is stupid, as you'll see in the book of Romans, but rather your relationship, I mean your religion should take you into a relationship so that you would religiously exercise your religion in your relationship. So you kind of got that? The bottom line is, since I don't have a halo, I can go. And you'll think that I'm good, maybe. But we want to take the Book of Romans, the Book of Americans, and look at it as it is, the way it is, where it is, what it is. And we want to exemplify that by using language and lingo and customs and vernacular and things that go on in our life and day and time and place, as opposed to what might have gone on back then, say when, it still applies today because, hey, after all, it is God making it applicable to you today. So this introduction really just kind of give you an oversight into what we're doing. 
we're looking into, examining, grabbing a hold of, and making applicable the Book of Americans. Because after all, those Romans, they got their own problems right now over in Italy. You know, they got a Pope and all that stuff going on. We have our own issues. We have democracy and freedoms and rights and privileges and, well, matter of fact, it kind of sounds like the Book of Romans, doesn't it? Liberty, grace, freedom, rights, privileges. Hmm. Maybe it is the Book of Americans after all. Sure sounds like it to me. I don't know. But we'll just have to dive into it and see. So, in this introduction, I wanted to read an introduction. Why not? After all, we have introductions to the books of the Bible. We might as well read the foreword of this introduction to how to be Christian without being religious. This book is a team effort. It began with Paul, the great apostle, when he penned his famous epistle to the church at Rome around A.D. 57. After that came Ken Taylor's living letters, the paraphrased epistles. Taylor's paraphrase in simple English of the New Testament letters first appeared in 1962. It became an immediate favorite with 1,750,000 copies printed in its first five years. Our special thanks go to Mr. Taylor and Tyndale House Publishers for allowing us to make the Living Letters paraphrase of Romans the backbone of this book. Our thanks, too, to freelance writer Hank... V v wow, Vigavino, who contributed material for several of the chapters, particularly 1, 2, and 8. Finally, my personal thanks to the members of the Gospel Light editorial team that added contemporary comment and cartoons to help catch the spirit of biblical Christianity. Joyce Timpson, art director of the Gospel Light Publications, did the cartoons. Georgiana Walker, assistant youth editor, and Diane Rissendaller, editorial assistant, covered the multitude of details involved in manuscript checking, proofreading, and retyping. The final result is, we hope, a handbook on how to be a Christian without the burdens of being religious. A book that helps you to see the power and potential in Jesus so that you can confidently and joyfully look forward to becoming all that God has in mind for you to be. All that God has in His mind for you to be. And that's what my prayer is, that you would find and discover, uncover as it were, as we go through the book, the realization of what God intends for you to know as we grow through this time together. Learning what it is that God may be speaking applying what might be something that he has intended from the beginning for you and making real that which he has already designed for us to apply in our lives so that we would grow up into the men and women of God that we should be. Because after all, we could all use another Bible study. I could, I don't know about you, but you know, I kind of like you know teaching, I kind of like sharing, I kind of like preaching, which is really what we're doing because there ain't no way you can call this teaching if you're not getting homework. I'm sorry, but if you don't got homework, you ain't got teaching. And if you ain't being checked, hey, what kind of schooling is that? So really, we're preaching, as it were, over the video. And I want to thank Vidibo. Well, thank you, thank you. I thank you, you thank you, yeah, thank you. Who do you thank? Thank you for Vidibo. <laughs> and I want to thank the Lord, you know, and thank my wife and thank the people. And, you know, thank you, thank you. My father thanks you, my mother thanks you, and I thank you. Thank you. You know, so now that we got that out of the way, we can move into the realization that God has intended for you to grow through the process of hearing the Word of God, reading it, thinking about it, considering it, taking it to Him in prayer, opening your understanding to thoughts you might not have had from your own way of thinking that God might inspire with His way of inspiration that he might be the teacher and we might be the students just receiving from him what he has to say. Because I don't claim that every word that comes out of my mouth is from God. Well, maybe. No. <laughs> Not really. Ah, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Again, buckle up my sleeves. Presto. No, I'm not Rocky and I'm not Bullwinkle. The point is, I'm me. I'm like you. Nobody special. However, when we get together at a special time, for a special purpose in a special place, then God decides, hey, that's special. And so he does something special. In this case, gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can be inspired by what the Spirit of God would make real to your ears, irregardless of what may be coming out of my mouth. 
So that's up to you, really, to eventually identify and apply accordingly as the Holy Spirit gives you unction from His own heart to yours to make that distinction between what is true for you and what is applicable for me and how we may all grow therein into the fullness of the body of Christ and the individual parts and ministries that we're supposed to be and all coming together in the unity of the faith and the brotherhood of the brother of Christ so that we can all be the bride and one day go home to heaven and we'll all be one accord and in one unity and be one body and one person and one place at one time. Because in the meantime, we all disagree about everything. <laughs> Don't we? Well, you know. So, trying to get us to coordinate this together, let's just blame everything that's wrong about what's being said on me. Okay? I can take it. I got it. Well, maybe not so broad shoulders. But we'll say everything that's good, we'll blame on God. Sounds good to me. Jesus said it. Everything good comes from God. You know, why call me good? I'm not good. Call your father and have him good. He's the only one that's good. Yeah, you know, good and plenty is up there, but good and uh, -uh no good, no good and no no plenty is right here. In that respect that we give to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I would choose to say to you that if you would simply pray, simply ask, and simply be led today, then God will lead you in the way He wants you to go. And if that means that you don't need to listen or watch or pay attention or apply or learn from this, then go do what God tells you to do. Because whatsoever the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. But if God does bring you here, and He wants you to hear, and He wants you to listen, then you're going to find yourself probably enjoying it as much as I do, because I'm as shocked by the things that come out of my mouth, maybe as you are. You never know what God may do. May sound like a donkey, may sound like a fool, or may sound like a man with God, or may sound like a man inspired by God, or may sound like the Lord. My sheep hear my voice and they know me, and they will not follow the voice of another. So let us examine in that light the book of Romans as Americans and throw out the title and throw in the throw out the bathwater and throw in the baby. Um, you know. Maybe set them in there gently, and then put some new water in. And let's call it the Book of Americans, you know, because after all, it really is what it's about. It's about Americans. It's about you and me, and that's what we're going to study. You see, the Book of Americans, the Book of Roman Americans or American Romans. Who knows how we'll post that? But we'll post it one way or another. And this was your introduction. So let's go, and away we go. Exit stage right. Evans to Murgatory, I think this is going to be fun.